We are given information here about a cubic function f of x. Um, here's the information here, right? And then they're saying, uh, let's use this information to draw the graph, right? Uh, let's indicate all the intercepts with the axis as well as the coordinates of the turning points. So step number one, when you're doing a question like this, is to determine where all your points lie, right? After you put all your points on the graph, you determine the turning points. After you get the turning points, you're essentially done because you know the general shape of the graph. So let's, you know, go ahead and do that. So we know that uh, when f is zero, right? When f is zero, uh, y is three, right? So we can put zero here, and then we know that y is three when f is zero, so we're supposed to have a point here. And then when x is minus three, uh, y is equals to zero, right? So when x is uh, minus three, y is zero. So we have a point here that's indicated uh, by a cross, right? And then which other point do we have? Uh, let's keep this for now because there we have a uh, gradient, right? F prime X. Let's focus on the point. Uh, when X is minus two, uh, Y is five. So here when we have uh, minus uh, two, uh, Y is five. So we have a point uh, somewhere here, right? And then when X is one, y is 1 so here let's have um, 1 for x and 1 for y so we need another uh, point here right and then now we can focus on f prime x f prime x is the gradients right uh, every time when the gradients are equals to 0 then we know that that is the turning point so when x is equals to uh, minus 2 we have a turning point, right? But we know that when x is equals to minus 2, the y value is 5. So this point here, which I'm circling, is the turning point. And at 1, uh, we have another turning point. The gradient is 0, right? But we know that when x is equals to 1, y is equals to 1. So here at this point, we have another uh, turning point. So now you can sort of, you know, see how your graph is going to look like. So we have uh, this turning point here. So we're supposed to turn. And then when we come to this point, we're supposed to turn again because it's a turning point, right? And then uh, it keeps going up. And then on this side, it keeps on going down. Now we just have to indicate our coordinates, right? So here we're saying that uh, this, this is 1 and 1. And here we're saying that this is minus 2 and 5. And here we have um, 0 and 3. Here at this point, we have minus 3 and 0. And yeah, that's how we construct our graph. You start with the points, uh, you determine the turning points, and now it becomes easy to see what your graph is supposed to look like. And then 11.2, um, 11.2.1, uh, it says, uh, let's use the graph to answer the equations below. Uh, determine the values of x for which x uh, multiplied by f of x is less than 0. So x, now uh, what is x? x is the value of the x coordinate, right? And then f of x is the value of y. We need um, values of x for which uh, the product of the two is less than zero so one has to be positive and then the other one is negative or the other one is negative and the other one is positive so that uh, the product can be less than zero right essentially negative so let's uh, look at our graph in the positive x-axis both x and y are positive right so there is no way that can be part of our solution, right? But then let's look at the negative axis. Here between uh, minus three and zero, x is negative, but y is positive, right? So the product of the two will be less than zero. But then if you go uh, below minus three, then both y and x are negative, so the product will be uh, greater than zero. So we only need the x to be between minus three and zero if x is between minus three and zero then 
x multiplied by f of x will be less than zero and then 11.2.2 says if uh, g of x is equal to minus f of x uh, write down the coordinates of the local minimum of point g the coordinates of the local minimum of point g will be minus two and minus five why am i saying that watch this video in the screen right now